Good to see everybody. Here we are. It's five o'clock. It's time for Watch Me Work, because what else are you doing? With your time. That's right. And um, we're here. We've been doing the show for 11 years, supported very kindly and generously and graciously by the Public Theater. Thank you, Public Theater. And thank you also to Hal Rowd, who came on about nah, three or four years ago to help us live stream and now has come together with the Public Theater to create this beautiful online community uh, that's so cool, and it gives me such joy to see you guys every day for five days a week or four days a week or how often we do this. Anyway, what we do is we work together for 20 minutes. I'm looking for my timer. Uh, anyway, I'll have it in a minute. We work together for 20 minutes, and then we talk to you, with you, about your work and your creative process. What we do have time for is just that. What we don't have time for is to have you read specific works because we've just talked about process, you know, keep it open for everybody. So if you have a question uh, during the question and answer time, Audrey will tell you how to get in touch while I find my timer. Go, Audrey. Good luck, Susan Lauren Parks, finding that timer. Um, so here's, uh, if you would like to ask a question during our question and answer, question and answer, oh my God, answer portion, and she already found the timer. Uh, if you're inside of the Zoom, all you need to do is click on the participant tab. Um, and inside of the participant tab, there's a raise your hand button. Uh, likely it's at the bottom of your screen if you're on a laptop and the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. Um, and if you are watching on HowlRound.tv, you can tweet at us at at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. Um, or you can tweet at the Public Theater, which is at Public Theater NY, or you can write to the Public Theater's Instagram. And those are the ways to get in touch. Okay. Those are the ways to get in touch. Here's the timer. One, two, you know what to do.
Yay. All right. So here we are, ready to talk with you. Let's do it. We've got Jim up first. Yo, Jim. Go for it, Jim. Hey, Jim. Oh, I am unmuted. Hi, yeah, last time I reported, I mentioned that I was writing a seven scene play. Hope to have a full draft of it by the end of the 4th of July weekend. And I've actually made that. And I am spending the few weeks to the, it was <laughs> required several hours a day because I was digesting over a hundred pages of notes. Mm. And I didn't feel I had to use every note, but I wanted to be tr true to them. And I was, and it was exhausting and I'm happy. And so the next few months, or uh, next few weeks till the end of the month, I wanna just do what I think of as take passes at it. Just read it to smooth it out, not major, rewrites that's the second draft and and will actually require structural things here's my question inspired a little by a few questions yesterday uh particularly the question what do you do when your um secondary characters carry you away this isn't so much that but as i mentioned to you before this is very much a stage play because it's about three old people at a home for retired performers and they cannot give up their space because their landlord is trying to get rid of them. So it requires that space. Coronavirus gave me the frame for it because for the second time in my life, I have seen my kind, I'm 68 years old, mm -hmm. treated like so much trash the, I'm a gay guy. The first time was when I was on the front lines of the AIDS epidemic and gay guys were treated like mm -hmm. trash. So that's what allowed me to totally reframe that hundred pages of unwieldy notes. That said, like yesterday's questions, I keep having these ideas about, can I take segments of it and make shorter pieces mm -hmm perhaps can be used outside of the traditional theater space. Hmm. But, and while that's interesting to me, and still is, mm -hmm. I liked a lot your answer about not letting your secondary characters carry you away from what really should be your focused goal of getting this piece at least at least to a point where you feel good enough about letting other people, the people you trust, see it and things mm -hmm. like that. So I guess long, and I know that you early on in your career would read sections of your plays and poetry readings. Mm -hmm. And so you know, that was like multi-purposing. I, I, I saw a part of, um, and one of one of your pieces that was quite wonderful. And another piece that I think maybe eventually found its way into Venus, but I'm not 100% sure. So you've done that. Do you think it's premature to start thinking of things like, well, will this little piece be good if we actually bring it to a nursing home itself? But will mm -hmm. it even want us in the middle of a pandemic? So, you know. Well well, there's a, well, first of all, Jim, huge congratulations, because I remember last time we spoke, if I remember correctly, you were talking about your beautiful play and you said, you know, how do we go forward not even knowing if there's going to be theater, you know, traditional theater. Yeah. And we talked about stepping out on faith and you're, you're an old warrior who knows how to do that already. Um, and I appreciated the opportunity to get to talk about it with everybody. Um, and it sounds like once again, you have done that. So it's really fucking badass that you, that you have uh, met your deadline, your finish line. So congratulations. That's huge. So now you have this beautiful draft 
and you have a couple of questions. One, will, uh, will we get to perform it in the way that you, you know, envision it? And I say yes. I say yes, it's going to happen. We're going to, it, 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 it's not going to be next week. But, you know, I just got off the phone with some people I'm doing some, some TV work for, you know, plan, you know, mindful people, not just knucklehead governors who want to just open their state because I'm talking about mindful people are really putting plans in place to, to find ways to reopen our traditional spaces of gathering. So, you know, so there's, there are plans afoot and people are very serious about it. I think eventually, yes, the, there will be a theater space for your play. In the meantime, aren't you lucky? You get to do your rewrites on your play. Now that's, so that's, so for that question, uh, put it in the yes box, right? Two thumbs up, it's gonna be great. Take this time now, this gift of time to do your rewrites as you've, as you've talked about them. The other thing, do, you, do we think that there are smaller pieces or, or secondary characters, right? who might find secondary characters in this play who might find, uh, who, who might have smaller plays? Is that, was that the second no, question? What I was thinking more of mm -hmm. taking segments, small mm -hmm. segments of this play mm -hmm. to an audience. Oh. And I think a lot of us are rethinking theater, not just because we were knocked out of our theaters, but seeing how, seeing the limitations of a theater, even though we love it, seeing its real limitations. Mm -hmm. So, for example, there's a stretch, a few stretches of the play where the three older characters are at a big picture window uh -huh, uh -huh. that look out on the city, but that picture window doubles as a screen at some times. Okay. So the other night I had a vision of, oh my God, what if we did this on a roof? Oh, and there are great. like six close roofs and some people oh. are looking out over and there are may, maybe only three or four people on a given roof. But if you have six roofs, and I live in the East Village, so yeah. we're, we're close enough for this shit. Right. <laughs> and, and Trisha Brown, a generation ago, used to do in downtown New York dances where uh -huh, uh -huh. the dance you're on different roofs and almost semaphore. So it's 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 things like that. Can I be thinking about non-traditional spaces? But but in some ways, I answered my question. I loved what you said yesterday about keep your eye on this one thing, but keep your notebook too for and, and doing passes of this too long draft that I'm just going to have to eventually trim down might be a time not so much to think seriously about that, but mm -hmm. just make a note. This mm -hmm. is a sequence that would be good for this, this for mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, Jim, knowing very little about your play except what you've told me in this context, um, are, you said they're performers, right, these people? Yes, they're actors, former. Yeah. yeah. Are they... Are they working on any material right now? Do you know yeah. where I'm going? No, I, I'm done. I'm, you, I'm what going. I'm asking, is there an opportunity to create little plays yes. in yes. your play of scenes that they might be working on? Yes. That could be in your play, but also not in, yeah. you know, separate from your play, an extension Thank of your you. play. There actually yeah. are there already, a really tie yeah. this one, but okay. I hadn't tied those two ideas. Uh -huh. No, there, the, there's a segment of a few of them. They actually, the, you know, the landlord's rep becomes their captive audience for uh -huh. a while. Oh, okay, okay, that's great. That's great. That's awesome. It sounds great, Jim. It sounds really I, great. And just give me a moment to thank this whole class. Because, um, I can't tell you how uh, inspiring it is to see this grid of faces. My first few weeks in this class, I went by Howl Round and live streamed, and it was wonderful. But it still is a whole different thing. 
if you're actually a performer up there on this grid. So I want to thank all of you, particularly those of you who come back day after day after day. It's so inspiring to see everybody working away at whatever your project is. So thanks yeah. for being my thank life. You. Oh. Thank you, Jim. You're amazing. Thanks, Jim. So, so happy to know you. Thanks, Jim. All right, up next we've got Vernita. Are you there? Where's Vernita? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hey, Vernita. How you doing? Hi, everyone. Hi, SLP. Hi, Audrey. Um, good to be here. And um, my question for today, please, um, kind of piggybacks a bit off of like, I feel so inspired hearing writers meeting their deadlines, whether well, it's like their own deadlines. Um, and so what's coming up for me today, it's like the last couple of times I shared, I've talked about these articles, um, you know, writing more than one article around a different perspective related to Black Lives Matter. And um, this particularly pulled out for me is a piece on Black men's mental health and breaking down stigma around mental health in the Black community. Um, I also have another, the piece I, we talked about like be smart, going hot would be smart as I wanna talk about my experience being a consultant in, uh, and, 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 and feeling racial bias uh, in, in companies that I've worked with. So both of these pieces are still open-ended. I haven't finished either one. Um, I'm working on kind of alternating working on both, but what's coming up for me is like, I find often in my experience, like sometimes I have time periods where I like, I am on fire and I turn these articles out and this is like boom, 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 like, which is what I very much felt with my piece around George Floyd, you know, just within a few days and I was just like in it and got it out. And then I get into these like lulls where like, it's just like this arduous thing to try to get my thoughts together I don't know if you remember way back, one of the first things I shared about, I was working on the piece around gratitude and COVID-19. That took me about a month to put together um, all in total. So all that to be said, is like, sometimes I feel like I'm late by the time I get my thoughts all together to put something out in the world. Um, and then I also know that um, the big part of my vision is to write and that long-term I want to earn primarily from my writing. So I feel this like anxiousness around like, how will I ever be able to earn if I'm not able to consistently meet deadlines, um, whether they're like my own deadlines to be rele relevant to what's happening now, or if I was writing for someone um, deadlines. So any thoughts? Sure, and it's, it is, um, that is the thing about making money uh, uh, and through your art, through, in your case, in my case, through our writing, right? Um, and they have these deadlines or finish lines, sometimes I like to call them, because when you're going all across the finish line, you know, your hands are up and you're like smiling and all that kind of stuff. So I like to envision myself crossing a finish line, you know? Um, but that is a good point. Sometimes you're on fire and sometimes you're like, it's like, ugh, like walking through molasses or quicksand or whatever. Um, I think a daily writing practice is very important. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, and sometimes, you know, I mean, the, the couple things, one thing, if you're doing, it sounds, you know, journalism or, or, or nonfiction, there's a window of opportunity. You feel, I got to get it. I got to get it out there quick. You know what I mean? So it can still be relevant. Um, but if you miss that little window of opportunity, just try, maybe you go back a little bit and, the time that it takes you to write, it might give you more perspective. Okay. Mm -hmm. So don't feel like I got to throw it out because the window of opportunity was just two days and I missed it. And now I don't have anything to say, or now what I have to say isn't going to be listened to. Does that make sense? So you can pull back and gain some perspective and gain some, some, some wisdom from that. Um, but the day to day cycle of your writing process, I'm the same way as you, Vernita. Some days it's like easy. Oh, writing's fun. Some days it's like, ah, writing's awful. I hate it. You know, 
or making music or the several different artist artsy things that I do. You know, sometimes it's hard and I don't, you know what? I don't fucking feel like doing it, you know? And I get attitude and everything and I look with anger on my notebook or my laptop or my notebook and my laptop and, or my guitar or whatever, I'm mad. And, and I really work to sit down with the instrument uh, or the laptop or the notebook anyway, All right? And if you can keep doing that, so the Joyce Carol Oates quote, which I'm going to mangle, you know, sometimes when my soul is as thin as a playing card, I write anyway. So if you can keep putting that time in, regardless of your mood, right? Um, so you got maybe 20 minutes a day, 20 minutes, three times a day, if you're working toward a finish line, you know? Um, does, that, does that make sense to you, Vernita? It does, and I um, I actually feel that I it really I really resonate with the um, pulling back, mm -hmm. uh, and that that was part of my experience with um, one of the pieces I did uh, recently on a on an interview subject. You know, the okay. interview subject you know broke the internet back in February, huh. but the piece I wrote on her in April had a totally different perspective that no one had touched on so yeah. that I guess it's, it's encouraging that um because like I I can't I could never picture myself necessarily being a like traditional journalist that's mm -hmm. like working for a newspaper turning okay. out you know the news of the day mm -hmm. but I love crafting thoughtful well-researched mm -hmm. commentary or um giving voice you know per, sometimes tied to my own personal experience mm -hmm. Um, that kind of captures the the um, the way we live in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, and for I, 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 I'm glad that that pulling back resonates with you because you can even use that technique to write about historical incidents. You know what I mean? I mean, you weren't there during the I don't know what the March on Washington or the Tulsa riots. You know, the Tulsa massacre actually. <laughs> You know, but you can pull back and take a look at it. So that actually broadens, literally, it broadens your horizon. Okay. You know? That's okay. Cool. And yeah, okay. the, the practice is, um, I've, I've improved a lot. So I'm just going to commit to the group to my uh, at least 20 minutes a day, no matter what. There you go. By any means necessary, we say. I, <laughs> okay. Thank you, Vernita. Thank Thanks, you. Vernita. Um, all right, up next we've got Laura. Laura, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Hi. Hi, Hi everybody. Um, yeah, I just wanna to thank you and thank everybody for the conversations about the, um, the, the main character, having trouble with the main character and um, making the, the the side characters a little more fleshed out because I, I I'd come to that realization recently mm -hmm. and so all the conversations we've been having here has actually really been helping me so thank you because now I'm starting to to get her more lifelike and that's really exciting so I just wanted to say that first um, but my next question is just a nitty-gritty practical question um, in one section, I have a character who's from New England, just very smart, small little chunk, but I really want the character to have, um, you know, a working class New England dialect accent. And I'm trying to put it down on the paper and it, 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 it's just looking really stupid. <laughs> I, you know, is there a... Um, I don't know what 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 guidelines might you have for helping with creating a the sound of a dialect uh -huh. on paper. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, um, I would first ask, where in New England are they from? Where in New England? Well, I'm I'm thinking I'm hearing it more as a Maine accent. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Okay. But and I I oh I'm sorry. No 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 Maine is good. I just wanted to, I wanted to hear you say. Yeah, because New England, you know, it's big. Yeah. Right. And people in Maine, as you have pointed out, you're hearing it as a Maine accent. 
So they, folks in Maine and in different parts of Maine, but I'm just thinking of the Bar Harbor accent is very different from say a New England, Boston accent or a New England, say Connecticut accent, right? So we know that it's, 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 it's very different, very different. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's it's um it's tricky with 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 dialects. Um, I would suggest initially sparingly, very sparingly, right? Uh, indicate it in the actual shape of the word sparingly, just to to try. Uh, how many have you written it already, and you're rewriting it, or are you writing it for the first? I've written. Time? I've done a first pass at it, so right. I'm I'm going I'm rewriting it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so so maybe so you've tried it already, so probably sparingly, so you can lean into it a little more. I would say maybe um, think of the vowels. Okay. Think of the in consonants and think of the adjectives surrounding the words. Did you know what I mean? So you can get a lot from, um, um, for example, if you wanted to, she spoke she spoke like a traditional New Yorker. It sounded like she was yawking a lot, for example. You said that. You see what I mean? So you put mm -hmm. the you put a description in the mind of the reader instead of trying to talk like that, you know, like a you know a traditional New Yorker or what mm -hmm. you know. I, I'm just you know, or a southern drawl, you know, instead of draw ah 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 all across the page. Right. And, you know, you could say she she drawled like a a mint julep drinking you know, Southerner at the Kentucky Derby. You know, you can, you can frame their, the language with description that will mm -hmm. give your added information about how to hear it. Yeah, fantastic. Does that, does that help? Yeah, it does. It helps a lot, yeah. Yeah, okay, so try that and then next pass, maybe we'll try something else <laughs> if you don't okay. like it. But no, I like, I, I'm interested in seeing if that is effective. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Um, all right, up next, we've got Christina. Christina. Hi. 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 How are you? Hi. Good. Happy to see you. Happy to be back. I actually was away a little bit because I just finished a play. Well, I was home, but I was finishing a play I had started, oh, I won't even say 20 years ago, a long time ago. It was on the shelf. It was my first play. I've written other Congratulations. Things. Congratulations. Congratulations. Hey. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing, it's like, Jim, it's also, a, it's about an old lady being evicted. <laughs> but, there you go. <laughs> it's also about that, but it takes place in the 80s. Um, mm -hmm for a high rise building, but but uh, I, I did a Zoom uh, reading with actor friends because I'm a director by trade. And uh, I did a, a Zoom reading and um, and I decided, oh, I need to do some, I want, and I knew the play needed some rewrites, but I wanted to really hear it out. And, and I uh, eliminated some things out of the play. And now I f felt like, oh, I just wrote myself into a corner because the ending might be different. And I don't, you know, oh, and it's sort of, what do you do if you write yourself into a corner sometimes? What's the process? What do you do with your characters or your, you know, or your actions or plot or do you have it? Uh... Yeah, yeah. So you write yourself into a corner. I'm just imagining it. You got your, what do you think? You got your back against the wall. I'm going to be on the corner of my screen. Ah, right? right? Because you've, you've made some cuts, edits and all that. Usually what I do is I, you know, you're in a, I turn around a lot. You, there's always a door, Christina. You know what I'm saying? There's always a door, a window, a, a mouse hole, a something to, to, keep, to keep it moving, you know? Right. Uh, or maybe the corner is a perfect ending for it. You know what I mean? So. So if you're if the cuts and edits you're making up until that point seem good and right and they seem like they're really working for you, then the corner that you're in might be the exactly the corner that you need to be in. You know, or you just need to fully inhabit the corner and pat around and see if you can find some kind of door window passageway where you can move to the next scene, you know. Okay. Does that does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, yeah. I'm go, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. And, I was, and even last night, I was thinking about it, I'm thinking, getting frustrated. I was brushing my teeth, and then I was like, hmm, well, maybe if I do this, but 
but yes, like like you're saying, pat around. But but I don't want to lose the theatricality of the ending and make and force it in, in that direction because you know got to let it the character lead the way, sort of. But but yes, I, I started seeing a little hint of a light under the door. <laughs> there you go. Right there, you go. Well done. Well done. Yeah, sure. So, and there you go. You're brushing uh, your teeth. You're going about your day. Maybe yeah. that could be cool. Oh, what about that? Uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and and because the main the main thing is like enjoy the process, you know, which is another way of saying don't despair, you know. Enjoy the process, you know. You've you've done a lot of work on this. You've taken it off the shelf, and you've done a huge amount of work on it. Enjoy the process. And may I ask another addition to that question, if, sure. if I may? Do I have okay. Sure, you have. Um, yeah. Here. I know characters at the end, you know, they go through a transition and, and have an aha moment of spiritual body or, or, or mind, but what, and sometimes they don't. And my character kind of is stubborn and set in her ways and, uh, and um, doesn't. Is that okay sometimes? Because that becomes sort of, a, it's a tragedy in, in an essence, but is that all right to do right. sometimes where sure. the character just, you know, makes decisions, but doesn't want to really give up her her way, her ideas, her, her way of life, her attitude. And so yeah. she has to take a, a different path. A, a, yeah. A path, but. yeah, do people do people around her have to deal with that? Yes, yes. Well, that sounds like a play to me. Okay. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's definitely worth trying. It's yeah. certainly okay. There are plenty of plays like people just run their shit until they explode, yo. Death of a sale. You know, yeah. yeah, there you go. Okay, well, it worked for Arthur Miller. It sure will work for you. You know what I'm saying? Right? Yes. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Sure, sure. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you thank all. You, thank you for having uh, this platform. It's fabulous. You were the inspiration to have me finish this play after all these years. Thank you. We, thank you. Thanks, Christina. Christina. Um, all right, we've got about 10 minutes left, and then we're going to go to right now, John. John, are hey John. you there? Hi. Hey, John. Hi. Afternoon, Susan Laurie. How are you? I'm well. Good to see you, John. Good to see you. Um, I'm going to give you a shameless shout out. Aha. Uh -huh. I don't really have a question, but uh, I've been rehearsing because of you with what I'm writing. Um, I printed each page out and I did the, I love this. You know, I want to change this. Uh, that thing about letting it simmer. Like I'm the kind of guy that cooks and my mother used to say, you can't, uh, you can't make a watch pot boil. And I look at it sometimes like, you know, you're going to get done. It doesn't happen. Um, mm -hmm. I'm less fearful to practice this with my colleagues on a zoom screen saying, hi, I created this. Give me feedback. And I've already got my, um, I can tell you this, what, what's it, what does this you do? That when people are saying not so nice things, you smile. Uh -huh. and say, I'm shameless. <laughs> um, and because That's of funny. my friend Rebecca, I'm writing 20 minutes a day. And today when I was going through, you, you left us with that image of um, in editing. I was on my horse and just cutting stuff saying, you know, this right one. On. So, um, oh, last thing. Um, I got myself a copy and uh, it lifted what my spirits. This, the uh, Helen Keller book. Oh, it's uh, you got a different copy. There. Oh, that's a nice one. Optimism. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's only 10 bucks. Yeah. But at any rate, um, I'm shameless. I, I really look forward to telling people, honey, you're helping me along. So uh, that's uh, the end of my shameless shout out for you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. Sure. Really appreciate Thanks, it. John. And it's cool because sometimes you can get um, inspiration or assistance, you know, from when you directly ask a question. And sometimes we get, we, and myself included, we get inspiration and assistance from Oh shit, sweat, I didn't even know I had that question. And so and so is asking it and you know, I get so it, it it works on on those several levels too. But thank you, John. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, John. Um, all right. Up next we've got Jacob. Go for it, Jacob. Hey, Susan Lang. Hey um, Jacob. So I have a, a weirdly specific question today. Okay. Um, uh, which is that, so I'm working on an idea for a play and um, I've been working on it for a little while and uh, someone was like, oh, you should read this other play that would be helpful for you. 
um, which I'm always into and I get really excited about. And so I read the play and I like hated it. Um, but I hated it in a way that I was like, I totally see why I, and this person had like, had just like talked to me about the play. They hadn't like read anything, any pages or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I like, I do see, I see the similarities with my play. And I think the fact that I hate it is like freaking me out. Cause I'm like, like, I don't, I know I don't want to make that, but I don't know what it is about the play. It's not bad. It's not badly done. It's, mm -hmm. it's somebody who's like, you know, super clearly like talented and put in the work and like, mm -hmm. and so I just like this question of like, how do you deal with work that is like similar, but also like trigger something in you and, and how to like listen to that and figure out what it is, what the thing is that is, it feels like it's a warning. It feels like my brain read the play and was like, this is a warning of a play, a direction not to go, but I'm not sure what it's warning me of. I feel like that that fabulous astrologer. I, I, I on Netflix tonight. I think there's going to be a movie about this awesome astrologer. Anyway, um, my, I don't have those skills. Uh, a psychic. I'm trying, but I'm trying to listen clearly to what you're saying. And think, is it like? I mean, I'm just asking. This I, I don't know, Jacob. But is it? Is it? Um, somebody has done it already is it that although it's not it's not that it's okay. just like so somebody did a really good job doing something similar not like close enough that i would be worried about ripping it off but it just like didn't like it didn't connect and so now i'm worried that like my story is not going to connect like i'm worried that i'm not going to connect with the story because like i'm not connecting with something that is sort of works the same way mm-hmm Mm hmm. I would. And so so it's like stopped you in your tracks this a little bit. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, and uh -huh. I feel like I'm just like sort of working it over in my head of like, what is the uh huh? Why do I? Yeah. Why do I have this feeling of like mm, something about it is is making you is, is put, giving you a lot of resistance. And you're yeah. wondering why am I? Well, this is the thing. We can do it this way. We can. We can. We can. I mean, and I love talking to you, as you know, and talk about like what it could be, right? Or we can go this way. What's the worst thing that happen can happen if you write your play anyway? What's the worst thing? You'll have a play that you've written. What do you think? That that isn't so. Good, you know. What do you think? What's the worst thing that's gonna happen? Yeah. I mean, I think the the. The worst thing in my head would probably be like, I think it's hard for me not to fall in love with my work. And so mm -hmm. I'm like worried I'm going to like write this play that I would also hate, except because I wrote it, uh, I won't even, I won't be able to see why it's broken. And okay. I think like the idea that like I have, there's this piece that like, I feel like it, the thing I read, there's like something wrong with it and I can't place it worries me that the thing that I write, I, there will be something wrong with it and I won't be able to place it. Right. So would it behoove you to, to read the play that you don't like again? Certainly not a bad read, idea. Read it, read it again. And if you think that that's what it's trying to tell you to find out, you know, if you can find out what it is about that play you don't like and that will help you avoid it, it might draw you to it. The, the worst, but Jacob, what you know is the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to write a play that let's just pretend isn't very good. And right. because you love it, you don't know that it's not very good. And you run around thinking it's really good. And people are going, his play isn't very good. Like that, like that. That's, that's the worst thing that's gonna happen. Like embrace that and know that if that happens to you, I'll be like, welcome to the club, Jacob. Shit, it happened to me all the time. People be running around going, that play isn't very good. Yeah, okay. so. You know, and and also know that the development process of your beautiful play is going to be in place and you're really good at taking notes and being self observant and onto yourself and self critical in a positive and nurturing way to yourself. So you have the skill set to take notes, listen to actors, listen to your director or your design team or your producers and do the rewrites necessary. So 
So writing a less than great draft is not going to take away that skill set. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it might be a, it, it just, maybe it's also an elevation. It's like suddenly you're like, you've written all these plays and screenplays and teleplays and stuff. And you're like, I always know when it's good or bad. And I know when to fix it. Right. That's you. Suddenly, I don't know when it's good or bad. And I don't know when to fix it. Guess what? The level of playing has changed, Jacob. It's like you were walking on this. Now maybe you're walking on this or right. It's different level of difficulty, mm -hmm. which shouldn't stop you from writing it. I would say, I mean, if you want to waste your time reading a play you don't like, I don't know, but I would say, forget the analysis, go to action, you know, Give yourself a hard green light. I heard that in a meeting earlier today. It's not just green, it's hard green. So give yourself a hard green light and write your play. Put the time in, write it, and then you're gonna be in the realm of the unknown. You know what I mean? You're gonna mm -hmm. be, you know, and you, you're not, you're gonna be writing in a, in, on a level that you haven't been before. Mm -hmm. And that's good. Yeah. Okay? Okay. okay. Cool. Thank you. If you Thanks, know. Jacob. <laughs> give yourself some attack. Give yourself a hard green light. I heard that to me, and I was like, "Dang! I didn't even know such a thing existed." But <laughs> it does at Disney. <laughs> oh, <ooh. laughs> right, we got about a minute left. Uh, I'm going to go to Mario. Hi. 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 Yes. Thank you, Audrey. Um, so I felt so much of what Vernita was saying earlier, and thanks again to everybody that's been a part of this um, wonderful class. I feel like, you know, as somebody that's also trying to write nonfiction or commentary pieces, there's this urgency or this feeling sometimes that if you're missing the boat, so to speak, or if in fact, you know, the moment has passed, somehow your opinion doesn't matter as much or your voice doesn't matter in that way. Um, and I've been trying to write about things related to COVID from a different perspective that I see related elsewhere. Um, again, from doing narrative medicine stuff, that's kind of where I'm trying to write from. And as I'm submitting things out there, yes, nice to see you again. Okay. <laughs> um, in terms of setting stuff out there, uh, you know, in the vacuum of not hearing back necessarily, it can feel like, oh, well, this opinion just doesn't matter very much, right? Or this voice doesn't matter in some way. And so I was wondering if you could just maybe share some tips or ideas on mm -hmm. how to stay fortified or to mm -hmm. stay encouraged when you're trying to put a perspective out there that isn't really necessarily gaining traction. I'm sure mm -hmm. that this fits into a lot of other genres of writing too, but it maybe hurts a little bit more when it's mm -hmm. um, something that's opinion-based or, or commentary-based. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you could just say a little bit more about, I guess, staying encouraged and maybe that tension that we feel between do I change the voice a little bit so that it does mm -hmm. get picked up or not? And kind of not wanting to lose your own sense of self in the midst of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really, that is tricky because there's an added level. I mean, and Vernita, you were also talking about this. It's great to talk about this, that you guys are writing these pieces and then sending them out and you wait. Uh, and if it doesn't get picked up right away or it takes a little longer, then there's that, there's that difficulty. Do you have a, a a writing group or a reading group are there would that be helpful where you have a group that you can at least like get some not feedback like you're gonna have to rewrite it but feedback meaning if you were a, a poet you'd want to go to a, a weekly slam you know what i mean you'd want to take something you you've written and you want to get up on stage and you want to perform it you know is there an opportunity for that to sort of get some, I mean, because I think what's great about what you're writing is, is that you want to see it published, you want people to react to it and respond to it. If you can do that, or maybe a website, like your own website, or a website with, I mean, you and Vernita, you guys could, some of y'all could get together and have like a website, which is just cool articles to read about stuff. Um, you know, which isn't, you're not waiting on, you know, whatever, I don't know, HuffPost to to pick it up or anything, you know, you're kind of, it's like a collective and your friends come and we could, I mean, we could all start visiting it and reading what you got, what you're thinking about and what you got to say, you know, um, something like that. Is there, I'm just making stuff up. Unmute yourself. I think you're talking. Are you, oh, oh no. Oh, sorry. Sorry. There you go. Mm -mm. 
Did it work? Ah, there you go. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I have like two other um, colleagues that we can kind of share information with each other and get kind of feedback in that way, but I don't necessarily have like a group or a circle necessarily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's kind of like one-on-one, -on -one, like, hey friend, would you mind reading this and like tell me if it, you know, mm -hmm. catches your attention in a certain way or what's mm -hmm. not catching your attention in it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think this idea of uh, following up with some of the other wonderful people that we are all joining together in this endeavor with would be great. So Verdita, hi, I'm going to, I'm going to say hi to you outside of here too. <laughs> right. And then once you guys set up something, you can encourage us to visit your site and then we can be reading it and like be part of your, you know, online community in that way. That'd be cool. Great. Yeah. Well, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks Mario. All right, it's six oh three. It's six oh three, and mm -hmm. it's and so we're, we we got to do that uh, public theater thing. We got to do that public theater thing, you know, and we're, we will be back though on on July twentieth. On July the twentieth, okay. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see you then. A lot of love, a lot of positive energy. Okay, a lot of uh, do your work. Okay, and we love you. Okay, yeah. Likewise, thank you, Matthew. Thanks, SLP. Yeah, love you. We'll see you on the 20th. Okay. See you on the 20th. Love you. Okay. Bye.